What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out The Tribe Must Survive. This is a game about a caveman tribe that's hiding from the dark. Uh, this is not a caveman tribe in our universe, this is a caveman tribe that exists in some twisted eldritch realm that seems to be somewhat influenced by like, salad fingers and a couple of other aesthetic art design choices. Uh, so basically, don't go out into the dark. At night, your cavemen should be huddling around a fire, being terrified of what is to come. We're gonna dive on in today, spend about 25-30 minutes with the game and see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or otherwise pass on. If after watching this, you did want to play the game for yourself, I've got a link for you down below in the description where you can get the demo till the end of the Steam Festival. And then on top of that, you'll find links to, you know, stuff about me, like my Discord, my Twitch stream, you know, all that kind of stuff, just in case you needed even more splatty in your life. I don't know why anybody would ask for that. I've been a part of my life since I was born, and frankly, I feel like that's been a massive mistake, but, you know, if you're on the other side of the fence, kudos to you. Get it done. Uh, so anyways, let's dive on in and do this thing. Whatever it is that lurks in the dark, it was about to get us. Everything happened so fast. Many were taken before we could sound the horn. The fire was our only hope. We had stocked up wood and food and everything else. But we had not prepared against the shadows within. When tension turned to carnage, we fled into the night. Aimless we ran, for days, through a blur of darkness and fog, death all around us. When suddenly, the fog lifted, and the light came back. At least for now. Those shadows will return. Prepare. We have to survive. Alright, so here we are. This is the game. Here's all of our little cavemen. Now, the fundamental mechanic you need to understand with this game is that if they are outside the radius of the fire, when the dark comes, they die very, very quickly. You've got about the same timing, like if you've ever played Don't Starve, you've got about the same timing before the Gru gets you, basically. And so, like, you really don't want people out after dark if you can help it. The other piece of advice I would give you with this demo is don't follow the tutorial. The tutorial sets you up for failure. And what I mean is that the tutorial doesn't really explain that you're supposed to be turning off your fire during the day. It doesn't tell you like a bunch of little just organizational things. And really, it kind of makes you overextend and then you end up dying either of starvation or from running out of wood. And so I found that I've had much better success by just ignoring the tutorial and not doing it at all and just kind of building as I can build uh, than following along because you're almost guaranteed to lose if you follow the tutorial. It just, it, it wastes so much wood just building random things uh, just to get you like, I suppose, acclimated to the gameplay mechanics that you're not going to have the supplies to survive long term. Hopefully I will survive here today and I'll be able to like give you some footsteps to follow in. But I don't know, this is a hard game. This is a pretty oppressive game when it comes to the fundamental rotation of time and how you keep people safe. So, the UI. We have what day we're on, and we have what hour it is. We have our stockpiles up here, everything from research to houses to stone to wood, all that kind of stuff. And then these are for our spiritual stuff right here. Like, you can treat people's minds by getting them all, like, whacked out and high out of their minds on, like, random bath salts that you found out in the woods. Down here, you've got a timeline. Uh, when it gets to about right here of day one, the darkness is going to come. I personally, you'll see what I mean, but I think the days could probably be about 40% longer, and it would make the game feel much, much less oppressive. But if they are going for oppression, this game has it in spades. Uh, we're going to go ahead, and the first thing we're going to build is a stockpile. This is where all of our stuff goes as we're kind of like gathering and doing our thing. We do want to take a look around the map and see if maybe... There's a lot of trees around. It doesn't look like we actually have a lot of trees. That sort of worries me. All right, so what I'm going to do is we'll put the stockpile down right here in between these two clumps of trees. Because it looks like we've got a forest over here. 
then what we're going to do, I would have preferred to have this closer so that they can still chop wood at night, but it's not going to work out like that. Uh, we're going to need some lumber camps. I would probably put one right there. I'll probably put one right there, and I'll probably put one right there. It's going to auto-fill in workers. One thing I would recommend is that the auto-stamping of buildings in this game, it feels a little bit cheap. Um, there needs to be some kind of like dust that goes whoomp when you put down a building or something. There needs to be like the sound of like when you put in a lumber camp, the sound of someone sawing and then a whoomp when it gets put down for the stockpile. You know what I mean? The sound of things being stacked or things being put together with a big whoomp and a smoke ring that goes out around it when it goes down. Uh, just auto stamping it on out here with that very light click sound. It feels very, very cheap to me. And I, you're missing out on just like free immersion that you could bank with the player right there. Once the night breaks, which should be very, very soon, we're gonna go ahead and disable our fire. And once we disabled the fire, are you going out in the dark? What are you doing right now? Yeah, I was gonna say, don't do that. The light radius, that's the other thing. When you click on this, there should be a ring that tells you exactly what the safe zone is. As of right now, it's hard to tell if your characters are gonna be safe or not. Like the AI tends to wander out there on its own. And so, like, you never quite know if they're wandering to their death because the AI is having a little bit of a brain fart or if they're actually safe in that area. All right, the night horn is no longer active because it's day. That means we're going to go ahead and kill the campfire real quick. Uh, people sitting around the campfire, all of your cavemen have different attributes. Uh, the one you want to pay attention to is discontent, which is basically like a combination of how fearful they are and how much all of their social needs and food needs and sleep needs and all that kind of stuff have been met. Uh, this game starts you out very much behind the eight ball. And so, like, you need to adapt, you need to move fast, and you need to make it happen. Otherwise, it's just not going to work out. Uh, with three wood gatherers, I think we should be okay. We've got a decent enough stockpile of food to where I'm not too worried about them eating through it very quickly. There is a mechanic called the night horn. If you blow the night horn, everyone will come back basically to the campfire. So that's another thing to keep in mind is that, you know, blowing the night horn is mandatory. You have to do it every single day. Uh, there is no auto blow the horn. There should be an auto blow the horn. If you right click on this, it should give it a little outline and it should auto blow the horn for the player. Uh, but if you miss out on blowing the horn, you're going to have a bad time. I promise. Uh, bad things are going to happen. So they're gathering wood over here. The nighttime is coming. All right, let's turn the campfire back on. We're going to blow the night horn to get everybody back to the campfire. And as you can see, he heard the call, so he's going to come back. It looks like they can limitedly gather down here from these trees throughout the night. So that's very, very good. Uh, we need to get some camp. We need to get some food generation stacked up. And we've got a lot of wildlife over here looking all cave painting-y. Uh, so let's go ahead and put down a granary. We'll put it right there. And since that's the drop-off point for food, we're going to go ahead and put in just like two hunter's huts over there. All the animals are close, but that's not going to remain true as we get further on into the game. Uh, the herds are going to go further and further out. And then at that point, you're going to have to build yourself kind of like these networks of bonfires to get from point A to point B in order to survive. I'll kill the fire for right now. And it looks like the hunters are going out and they are beginning to hunt, although the animals have run away, which is going to make things a little bit more complicated. Uh, this is a problem that I've run into pretty much every single playthrough, is that you start out with animals very much nearby, and then as the game goes along, the animals get so far out that you can't get to them. I would strongly recommend they remove that mechanic, or at least add like a mechanic where the herds periodically come back, I guess. Um, that would be a really, really good idea because as of right now, it can be very, very difficult. Oh, let me get the fire lit. Hold on. Turn on the fire. She might get got. Es possible. We seem to be all right. I think we're okay. Uh, they're continuing to gather wood down here. This would be a great time for us to get a tent. Uh, the tent is a place where your colonists can go to restore their sleep need. And the tent should fit all of them. The tent holds six people. Uh, a group of strangers have approached the camp. They saw our fire and they've decided to ask if they can join us. Sure, why not? Jump on in here. The fun of dying in the dark belongs to all. We'll kill the fire real fast. I do hope that they add like a, a meter down here where you can set up the fire to auto burn. Basically in between certain hours without having to click or move things around. I think that would be a very, very intelligent thing to add to the game. 
I'm going to go ahead and add another hunter's hall over here. Just so we can have another hunter working on things now that we picked up three guys. They are going to be sleeping for a little while. So there may not be a lot of work that gets done. Um, I would actually maybe even suggest a fourth hunter's hall. Just to make sure, like, I run out of food, like, every time I play this game. Because the herds get further and further and further and further away. And there just doesn't seem to be much you can do about it. Uh, there definitely seems to be, like, some balance passes that need to go through on this game. Like, some fairly serious balance passes. Like I said, I think the day could probably be about 40% longer. Uh, it just does not seem like there's enough daytime to actively get all your tasks done. Unless you luck out with the map gen. And you have, like, a number of resources that are inside the light radius of your campfire. Um, and then with the herds and things, they just get too far away because they get scared by the people working in the hunter's huts. And I get that that's realistic, like they get further and further out, but I don't think it should be wrecking you within a week of starting the game, you know what I mean? Like, there should basically be kind of like a push-pull, where if they get like a certain distance away from the town, they start to pull back in. And it sort of seems like that happens sometimes, but not all the time. I'm wasting wood right now. There we go. Bring that food back. We need it real, real bad. There we go. Sometimes they'll just wander around with food in their inventory, and they'll, like, never drop it off at the granary. They have to go out and kill two animals, basically, to make a drop-off. And, like, I don't know what happens to the extra food in the case that they don't make it back in time. Now, let's go ahead and light up the fire real quick. We're going to go ahead and sound the horn to get these people back to town. An eclipse is coming in seven days. So as you can see, like, the hunters that have food on them right now, they don't drop it off back at the stockpile when you sound the horn. I don't know why. I, I feel like that should be the first order of business as they make a beeline for the stockpile and drop it off. It's the next day. We'll go ahead and turn off the fire to save on wood. People's needs are getting a little bit rough right here. We may have to do a second tent. I don't want to, but we may have to. I do think that sleeping and stuff like that tends to take far too long as well. Like, it basically uses up, like, an entire day whenever they sleep. I thought maybe she was dropping food off at the stockpile, but it doesn't look like it. And yeah, she's going, oh, well, no, some food got dropped off at the stockpile. I'll take it, dude. Sometimes, like, I've been playing this game for about an hour now. And, like, sometimes it just seems like the food does not get dropped off. And you're kind of like, okay, so, like, are we not doing the food thing out here? Like... What's going on? Uh, let's go ahead and call everybody back. And we'll light the fire. Come on, Splatty, light that fire. Dude, I'm playing kind of risky right now. I'm playing kind of loosey-goosey with these tribe members being out in the dark. I might have to work on that. All right, so we've got everything except for our spiritual needs taken care of. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is I would say let's go ahead and relocate this and this down to this little outcropping of trees. Yeah, let's do that. You can shift-click buildings in, by the way. That is an option. I'm not really doing it right now, but you can definitely do it. Uh, the eclipse is coming, though, and I think that at least one of these guys is inside the radius of the gatherer so that they can get it done. 55 food should be enough to last us a couple more days. The eclipse, I don't know how long it lasts for. It may last for, like, a really, really long time, or it may last for just, like, a little while. I don't know. Let me kill off the fire real fast. That should add some efficiency to our wood gatherers for at least the next couple days or so. And then the next thing we need to get up and running is going to be a shaman. Uh, so we need to have somebody that's going to be able to make the drugs and the medicine that fixes people's stats, basically, for when they get in trouble. All right. It looks like their hunt is good. So let's bring everybody on back. We'll turn on the fire. I think I've got the timing about down right now for getting people back into the light. It looks like the light radius starts, like, right there. So we've got 94 wood. We've got 63 food. I would say we're in pretty solid shape right now. We can probably think about building something. Uh, the Spirit Lodge is, like, ridiculously overpriced. Like I said, there needs to be a balance pass across some of the builds in this game uh, because some of the things, like the stockpiles and whatnot, like the very basic buildings you need in order to function, are very expensive. And so anyways considering it takes almost an entire day just to get like 40 wood like having granaries and things or like the stockpile which requires that you have wood in order to get one should be a little bit lower a strange man has arrived at the camp 
He is a full head taller and looks much stronger than any of our tribal members. His ragged hair and beard melt in his huge mammoth fur gown, giving him the appearance of a giant bear. He looks wildly from left to right as our tribe members approach him. As he discovers you, your eyes lock and the feral expression on his face turns into a clam steady stare. Man, what a sentence. A clam steady stare. All right. I am here to take something from you, but not as a robber. Today I am not more than a beggar in urgent need of help. I cannot stay, but I will return in three days to take 50 stone. There is nothing material I will give you in return. Will you help me? No. Sucks, but we live kind of in trying times, and so we should expect that generosity is going to occasionally be put on hiatus. All right, let's kill the fire real quick so that we're not burning through our supplies during the night. Hopefully with the wood that we get from our gatherers today, uh, we will be able to build the spirit hut because that's going to be a big source of discontent for a lot of our characters. It's just like the inaccessibility of being able to get their hands on any type of like mental health care uh, for like the fear and the terror that's taking place by being hunted by a weird te like tentacle monster that lives out in the darkness. It's kind of odd, like, whatever lives out in the dark doesn't go after the wildlife. You'd think it would go after the wildlife, too. Maybe it's only after the weaknesses of the human soul. She might get got. Nah, she made it. I mean, just barely, but she made it! Well done on fleeing from death. I'm very proud of you. Alright, let's kill the fire right there, and we have enough for our shaman hut. Let's go ahead and do the shaman hut. Not enough resources. Oh, it costs a hundo. That's right. Uh, we're running out of wood over here, too. Yikes. I do wish that I could manually command them to go scout and go, like, look at stuff. Unfortunately, I don't think that we actually have that operation available. There we go. We have 117 wood now. But I'm a little bit afeard to build the shaman hut. Just in the off chance that we kind of bottom out all of our wood supplies and then we can't light our fire all night. Everybody's already back inside the radius, so that's good. We'll go ahead and light the fire. We gotta sound the horn. We did bring in a little bit more wood right there, but I think we're actually just about steady on wood supply. I mean, unless this guy brings back another 20 stack. Yeah, let's go ahead and destroy these. The day is here, so we'll go ahead and kill off the fire. And we're going to rebuild these guys, like right here. It may be worthwhile. Yeah, it may be worthwhile to kind of... I mean, there's not a lot of trees down here, so that also worries me. But I just don't have the resources right now to fix stuff. How bad is it with the tribe? We're not close to a riot. I mean, everybody has terrible spiritual needs. So we may be able to pass on it for a little bit in the interest of going after maybe stone. But I don't know. Stone will give us access to, like... It'll give us access to crop fields and things. We need to have a crop farm first. Okay. Let's see how much wood we have tonight. If I can build something, I'll build it this evening. But I've, I've killed myself so many times in this game and so many poor cavemen that have nothing to do with my just absolutely awful managerial decisions um, that, like, I've become a little bit gun-shy about killing off any more cavemen. I don't want to be like a caveman mass murderer, and it sort of feels like my career is heading that direction. Sound the horn guys have any wood or anything to drop off now would be the time to do that so that I can actually fairly appraise what we have going on it looks like they dropped something off but we have 115 right now it's risky but hey let's do it let's get the stone going so that we have stone mines running 24 hours a day all right it's daytime let's go ahead and save on wood where we can the eclipse is coming on day 15 and we're gonna have to deal with that when it gets here it's just gonna stay dark forever I may try to see if there's a forest up there that maybe they can gather from. It might be worthwhile. 
another stockpile that's a little bit closer to where they're gathering from, I think, would also be a good idea. But it's a risk right now. We should have at least another day's worth of wood from this forest right here, so... I think it'll turn out okay, and I am willing to bet that on my villagers' lives. Even though that might be seen as kind of like a negative thing to do. Light the fire. I need the hunters to start coming back now because they're too far out. Yeah, it looks like they come in towards the fire at night. Hey, we got 67 wood. Good, and we've already picked up 10 stones. So I'm going to try to get a crop farm ready to go. I don't know if there's going to be like a forester's lodge or anything we can do in order to get like a small trickle of resources coming in. Like wood. I'm, I'm, I'm very worried about our wood supply right now. I don't think our wood supply is going to work uh, for what's going on here. It's hard to say, but we get 10 stone a day from the stone mine. And honestly, like, even though their spiritual needs are not fulfilled, we're not really anywhere near having a riot. So I feel like I can probably leave them on that razor's edge for a little bit and just kind of hope that it doesn't backfire on me. I do need people to go scout up here. So maybe I'll put in another woodcutter up here. Just to see if this extra guy at the camp... Oh, I forgot to turn off my fire, dude. I'm wasting wood right now. Yeah, you guys are way too far out. Come back. Alright, let's light the fire. It doesn't cost you anything to light the fire, as far as I can tell. I wasn't really watching my, my wood meter, but... We've got 20 stone to play with. We could probably limit our risk a little bit by getting rid of the hunter's huts once we actually know what the throughput is. On... Oh, good. She's going up there. My plan worked. There you go. Clear out that fog of war. I do think that their vision radius could be a little bit larger, too. Go ahead and kill the fire, because I don't know if we're going to have enough for the night. But she should be able to get at least one load of trees done by the end of the night, I think. I'm really hoping she does, because that 20 wood might be what saves our booty holes. Uh, we have plenty of food right now. I would suggest we make a crop farm instead. I need to wait and see how much wood we're going to have at the beginning of the night. Go ahead and blow the horn and get everybody back to camp. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's a deduction or anything for us relighting and unlighting the fire. We've got 71. A hunter is missing. Payu Holras has disappeared. Fear and discontent spread among the other hunters. It's too dangerous to hunt. Something's in the shadows. Something that's not from this world. Okay, that's not great. I didn't have enough influence to basically calm everybody. Wait, did it say 50? I did have enough influence to calm everybody down. How bad is this going to be? Eh, it doesn't look too bad. I think we're alright. I think we're okay. Alright, so we'll turn that off real fast. Fear is pretty high right now. But we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, I do think it's a wise idea maybe to shift our lumber operation over to here a little bit. Uh, because there's no trees left for that one right there. And there's very few trees left for that one, so... I wish I could give a manual order to tell them to go out there. It looks like we do have an explorer platform. Oh, but it's coming soon. We can't actually deploy that. Uh, we do have the wood for the crop farm right now. So I guess I'll deploy one of those. Unfortunately, it appears as though we don't have the workers for it. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the stone mine for the moment. Uh, because... Stone is kind of an advanced resource anyways, and we don't need it all the time. Hopefully moving that to up there will make this work a little bit better. I may need another stockpile to really get the full mileage out of it, but... I don't know. I'll worry about it later. This run is going much better than all my other runs. Usually I'm dead long, long, long before the first eclipse gets here, so this is good. This is good. Uh, did we light the fire? We did light the fire. Okay. Blow the horn. Everyone return to the fire. 
Fear is going down, so that's nice. Oh, look, there's even more that I can show right there. Discontent could be better. It could, it could be a little bit better. I'd like to leave the fire burning all day so that the people that are having problems with fear can just sit by the fire until they're all fixed. And we do have a little bit of extra wood thanks to our gatherers that are a little bit closer to that tree resource right there. Uh, the other option is, because these guys are walking kind of far, we can move this over to here. But that does put them at risk of getting got by the night if we don't pay attention. Yeah, I'm going to leave the fire burning for the next entire period so that people can fix their fear. I think. It's not fixing very quickly. We could add more intensity to the fire so that they feel safer. But... I don't know. I, I, I just... I just I'm a little worried about... Oh, the eclipse is starting. Yeah. Okay. The eclipse is starting, and that's going to introduce kind of an interesting problem that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, you guys come back. We do have the stone right now. Oh, the sun has disappeared into a strange mist that has built up around us. The light of the fire protects us, but there is something in the dark waiting for the flame to shrink. Yeah, it certainly looks like it. Oh, that lasts a long time, dude. That lasts like a really long time. If I put one of these braziers out here, will that help? Uh, it looks like it did, yeah. All right, well, I'm going to have them go do their thing then. I mean, I'm going to have the wood gatherers go over to these two little huts over here. Oh, no, dude, Krorreg is gone. Alas, poor Krorreg. Okay, they're all going to try to go back to do their jobs. Never mind. That was a bad idea. Uh, let's go ahead and kill that so that we're not wasting wood. And we'll just have people kind of camp out, although I think we're going to run out of supplies. I'm kind of watching how fast it's ticking right now. We've made it through one day of the eclipse, so that's nice. Where are you going, bro? Oh, he's going to eat. Okay, that's fine. You can go and eat. It's just barely inside our radius right now. Oh, dude, we lost a bunch of our guys. Like, a bunch of them just got consumed by this creeping on in. I could hear them screaming in the dark. So, yeah, like, I like the game, but I think there's, like, for a demo, it's a little bit rough. I think there's a lot of adjustments they can make here. Oh, no, discontent has gotten out of hand. A riot is breaking out. Riot! Oh, no, dude. Well, I think that might be the, uh, the end of us right there. I tried to get a wood chopper right here so that they could go get from those trees, but the riot broke out right as I was doing it, so I think that might be done diddly doodlies for us. Uh, but anyways, this is The Tribe Must Survive. I like the game, but the things that I've noticed so far. Okay, so my first observation is that the game has a very, very flat appearance. In fact, it's the first thing that jumped out at me. There's a lack of, like, perception depth that I think could be fixed a little bit by deepening the shadows on the foreground objects and also texturing the ground a little bit more so that stuff that's in the foreground pops. Now, uh, the art style is what it is, so I'm not going to comment on that as it comes down to kind of personal taste. I do think it captures the creepy vibe of being abducted in the dark that they're going for, but I can't say that I like it. It's kind of off-putting and scary. Uh, the days could stand to be a little bit longer. Uh, I think an extra 25% would be nice due to the amount of just transit it takes for workers to complete a single resource production rotation. They spend a lot of time moving between point A and point B very slowly. Um, and I get that they're trying to keep the game very dark and very oppressive and very panicked feeling, like, are we going to have the stuff that we need? And they've succeeded at that, but it also means that your build order and the perfection of your production building placement is really, really rigid right now in the current build, especially given the fact that resources despawn and you're constantly going to be moving your work areas around. It's just a lot. Now, obviously, this is a game that's very inspired by Frostpunk, so I would recommend they take a look at Frostpunk again and really pay attention to their UI to minimize fiddliness and note the things that Frostpunk did in order to, in order to smooth over the game and get rid of a lot of the micromanagey stuff.
Uh, things like the horn and campfire, I think automating that should ab absolutely be put in the game, but the player should be required to input custom times that the automation will take place at to find a good middle ground in between both management and risk. But yeah, this is the tribe must survive. I'm intrigued. Obviously, this is a rough early demo, so we'll see what happens with it as it releases to the general public later on, uh, but I am intrigued. So anyways, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I'll catch y'all tomorrow. Thank you for hanging out, and that's about all that I've got. Bye-bye.